Hi, I'm Marilyn with Making with Marilyn. Thank you for joining me today. Since you've stumbled onto this video, you're seeing my first ever YouTube video. So I apologize in advance if the quality is lacking, um, but hopefully I'll get better over the weeks to come. Today's project, I am etching the words monk fruit onto a canister. I've had these canisters in my kitchen for at least two years. They're just canisters that I inexpensively purchased at Walmart. And I etched the word flour and sugar onto these, but I wasn't sure if I wanted to commit to monk fruit yet. And so I just put an adhesive sticker on it. Uh, today's project, I'll be cutting a stencil with my Cricut Maker. So I know it's a little bit hard to see the etching, so I'm going to put this piece of dark blue cardstock down in here so that you can hopefully see that just a little bit better on camera. They really are very pretty in the kitchen. It's just a nice subtle touch. Alright, don't tell my husband I had cardstock in the flour. So let me get my space cleared off just a little bit and then we'll get started. To let you know what you're going to need today, I've gathered everything here. By the way, if you want to follow along the project with me, you can gather these things, hit pause, and then we can work together. So, let's see. First of all, you're going to need something to etch, and today that's going to be my smaller canister. You're going to need some type of stencil material. I purchased this large roll, and I've used quite a bit of it already, this large roll of Oracle, it is the 631 uh, vinyl at Amazon, um, and it's really, it's inexpensive for what it is. That's that. You'll need some etching cream. I've only used this Armor Etch. I really like it. It doesn't take very long. Um, if you get it with a coupon, it's relatively inexpensive. I mean, this isn't cheap, uh, but you really don't use much for any application. They last a long, long time. So to get started, I also have this um, cutting mat, or it's a quilting mat that I've had forever. Um, we'll use that. Of course, I'll have a mat that I use to cut the stencil in my Cricut. And for transfer paper, I just use, I know the name will roll around there sometime, I just use this really inexpensive contact paper. It's a uh, semi-clear, it's called clear matte, transparent matte um, contact paper. You can get it at Walmart, you can get it at Amazon. I looked today on Amazon and there were, it was really inexpensive for a ton of paper. So I'll link to that. Um, I've already done it today because this is my third time to attempt this video and I didn't like where it was going so I stopped and started over twice. So this is my third time to do it. Um, but since this has been in my kitchen for a few years, two or three years, I sprayed the front. I'm going to do it on this side. I sprayed the front with alcohol. This is just alcohol you can get at the Dollar Tree, Walmart, Walgreens, any place, the drugstore. Dried it off, dried it really well so that I don't have any problems with the vinyl sticking to it as my stencil. Okay, a few tools. I'm going to use this rotary cutter. Feel free to use scissors. I'm going to use the ruler so that I can kind of measure up. Um, I want it about two inches off the table. And then in a couple places, I will put some washi tape so I know I'm getting my stencil straight. And then a weeding tool to weed my stencil. And this scraper thing to really adhere my stencil down to my, or my vinyl down to my mat, which is really important for me today because my mat is pretty old and losing a lot of its stick. Okay, so if you want to gather things and come back, hit pause now. Otherwise, let's get started. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is cut a piece of this off. Now, I can use the inch markings on my cutting mat so that I get about the right amount of material. My stencil is going to be a little bit more than two inches tall 
and about five and a half inches. So one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so so I'll cut that out, and then we can just set this aside. We're done with it. Then on my Cricut mat, I want to set this down in the position where I'm going to be cutting from. And I already have this design made since I had used it with adhesive vinyl. And so I won't be going through how to do that on the Cricut today unless you guys want me to. Um, if you do, I'd be glad to do a secondary video that shows you how to do that. So, if that's something you want, just leave a comment below and I'll go through that process so that you see how I did that. Okay. So I have this ready to go into my Cricut Maker. I'm going to pause my camera. I'll get my cutter and my computer set up and I'll be right back. Okay, so I brought my maker and my computer over to my desk. Let's go ahead and get it opened up. You might see my cute little decal that I cut out and added because I make some heat transfer vinyl things and I wanted to always remind myself to mirror the image. Hopefully you can hear that over the machine. Remind myself to mirror the image so that I wouldn't waste my heat transfer vinyl. So I'm sending this to the maker. And the first thing I need to do is uh, make sure it's a fine point blade in it. It is. I've already checked that out. I set the material to vinyl. So let me get that put in. And I load it. And then when the Cricut light starts flashing, it's ready to cut. Okay, so it's showing that it's 100% done. I can unload my mat. Isn't it fun to watch your machine work? These Cricut makers are workhorses. I'm just so impressed. Okay, let me get this set to the side. Move my computer. And then I'll get the camera straightened back up and we'll finish our project. Okay, we've unloaded our mat from the Cricut and we're ready to weed. The important thing here is to remember you're pulling your letters out so that you can use the letters as a stencil, which is backwards to what you do a lot of the times where you're leaving the letters to adhere them to something. So, trust me on this, pull your actual letters out. And it doesn't take very long, this vinyl weeds really nicely and when you get to the parts that are welded together and if you don't know what I mean by welded leave a comment and I'll explain more okay so I used a weeding box around this so I have a little bit of excess vinyl here. What I mean by that is I have the Cricut cut a rectangle around it and I centered monk fruit uh, both horizontally and vertically so that I could use this outside edge to make sure things are lined up and we'll do our best. When I take vinyl off a mat I like to turn my mat over and pull it up because if you really peel your vinyl up, it buckles, it just doesn't work real well. So that's one hack is to always pull your mat off your vinyl. Some people like to do what's called reverse weeding. Um, that's a nice way too, but in this case, just pulling the, the mat off the vinyl worked the best for me. 
Okay, so before we can adhere the stencil to the glass, we need to cut some transfer paper or transfer tape. Um, in this case, again, I'm just using inexpensive contact paper. And all right, I think I can pretty much eyeball it. You want your transfer tape or your transfer paper to be just a little bit bigger than your design. So, cut that off. Pull the backing off. And then what I like to do, instead of pulling all the backing off and using what some people call the taco method or just haphazardly placing it down, I like to peel back and reveal just a little bit. In this case, it's about an inch. And then I can start it at one end. And you can rub it down and as you're pulling, keep rubbing. This really works well to keep everything smooth. And then I want to burnish this real well so that I don't have any problems pulling my stencil off its backing. Oops. Again, I'm using Oracle or Oracle. I'm not sure how it's pronounced. 631 that I got off of Amazon very inexpensively. I will link to it below. And then you are just pulling... Again, I kind of like to pull the backing off, making sure that everything comes off. Because if it doesn't, you want to push it back down, burnish a little bit more, and keep pulling. In this case, it all came off beautifully. Okay, there's really not a front, a back, or a side. I left this on for now. Once I am successful with etching this, I will take that off. Um, okay. So let me back up a little bit. I want my design to start about two inches from the bottom. So, I'm going to take a little bit of washi tape and put it at two inches. And then Pull a little bit more off. I could have just done a whole thing. I don't know why I didn't. Sometimes you just go with it, right? So there's two inches. And let me try to get that just right. Okay, have it ready. This is the bottom of my weeding box. And I know that it's straight. And I know that monk fruit is straight within it. And it's fairly centered. So what I want to do is, I want the bottom of my weeding box to be close to even with my washi tape. Now I don't like that. So we're going to pull back up. Sometimes on rounded things, your material likes to do weird things. But if that happens, you can cut a little slit in it and then you can kind of pull it back down. And the main thing is, okay, I'm happy with that. The main thing is, is you do not want any bubbles under where your um, edges of your letters are because if there are, your armor etch will sneak under that and it just won't be a clean finish. Okay, or a clean etch. So make sure that those edges are really down very well. As far as bubbles under the rest of it, or even if there were a little fold under that, it really wouldn't matter because the armor etch isn't going to be up there. Okay, so we're ready to take off our transfer paper or our transfer tape. I 
I find that if you almost lay it back down flat, so you pull it way over, and you just pull slowly and gently, that it works out pretty well. Now, I want to inspect and just make sure there's no bubbles. Okay, so I don't know if you can see this, but there is a bubble under the material right there, but I don't care because that's not where the armor edge goes. But if there were a bubble, like there's a little bubble right here, and I want to make sure that does not cause me any problems. So I'm going to try to work that bubble out. There we go, and I did. Okay, so we're good. I don't care if this is on there or not. The words are higher than in the center, but that's okay. I want them a little higher because the other two canisters were taller, and I'd like my word to be, you know, about the same level as where those words were. So we are ready to etch, finally. A whole purpose of this video. So I want to take this. I want to shake it up really well. Let's see what the directions say. Where are the directions? Yeah, well, it tells you to flush your eyes out if you get it in your eyes. Okay. I don't even see directions, but I've used it enough so I know what to do. So, shake it up a little bit, especially if it's been a while since you've used it. It has a uh, cap on it that is safety guarded. So you have to push down a little bit on it. Okay, let's get to where we want to be. I think I'm going to just prop it up right there like that. Okay, so all I do is I get my popsicle stick in there. I like to do it over it because if you do it to the side and then you pull it over it, if any drips over here, that's not going to be good. So I just dab generously over the letters, making sure that I don't let it go off the stencil again. You will not be happy with yourself if that happens. I've had it happen. So I've learned to do a decent sized weeding box around it so that it doesn't happen. And see, this goes on really fast. This is a super easy, easy project once you get your stencil made. And I've seen videos where people go over it two or three times and they go this way and then they go this way. I just haven't found this to be a difficult project to work with. You definitely want to make sure that all of your exposed areas are covered. Um, but it's just not a difficult project to work with. One thing I will do is, as I'm rolling this over to do this side, I am going to watch that to make sure it doesn't seep down onto my glass. Matter of fact, I'm going to add just a little bit of washi tape so that there's more protection. Extend my vinyl just a little bit further with this washi tape. Okay, so now we're ready to do this word. Just gently move it around, get it in the right place. Again, I do like to hold it over my product or my project that I'm making in case it falls off my popsicle stick. And that's doing fine over there. Nothing's dripping. This should be the last that I need. So you can see it just really doesn't take a lot. Okay, 
we're done. So I'm going to let that sit for a few minutes. I've seen people that say let it sit for 15 minutes. I have never found that leaving it sit for 15 minutes really adds any benefit over leaving it sit for just three or four minutes. So as that is doing its thing, I'm going to clean up a little bit. Hopefully I can figure out how to fast forward this so that you don't sit there waiting for it to etch. Okay? I'll be back. Okay, so it's been about five minutes and while I was letting it etch, I looked online to see how long I should leave it on. Um, and I just read a couple of opinions and one said at least five minutes. I think the actual instructions may say a little bit less than that. But I've left it on five minutes and so at this time, so I don't have to run into the other room and, and wash it off in the sink, I do have some water and just a little tub and I am, I'm always concerned about chemicals and so my hands are going to be down in this water. with the etching cream and so I am going to put on some gloves and then after the video or maybe in the middle of the video I will go and actually wash it a little bit better. Okay. So before I do that though, this etching cream, which I have two bottles of, can be reused. And so I'm going to take some of it off and scrape it back into the jar. Now you want to be careful doing this. I got pretty close to the bottom there. I don't know that it's worth saving a little bit of etching cream to ruin your design. So you don't have to get it all. I think that's good. I'm throw that away. So I'm going to put this down in the water and just really rinse it off. get it all off my jar as soon as I can. Looking good. That looks good. Well, that looks really good.
so I will be able to remove my vinyl now. I'm very happy with this. And get it a little bit drier on the inside and the outside. And then show you what it looks like. And I'm very cautious, so I will wash this multiple times before I put food product in it. And I would recommend the same to you. Okay, so hopefully you'll be able to see this. I'll use the same blue piece of cardstock that has flour on it. Put it inside. And so if you see a little bit of white dusting, the etching looks very good. It's probably flour on the cardstock. But let me pull that up and move it around in case there's a cam camera glare. But isn't that pretty? That will finish out my set of canisters so nicely. So let me get them set up and I'll be right back to finish this video. Okay, so we're finished with the project and as you can see, it did etch beautifully. Hopefully you can see that. I used three different fonts. I wanted them to not be matchy-matchy. And so if you have any questions about this tutorial or the products I use or anything about this video, please leave a comment below. If you like the video, hit like. It was my first, so I apologize uh, for those of you that didn't like it. If you didn't like it, please be kind. If you have questions or suggestions about how to do things better, whether it's the video or the actual projects, please leave me a comment. And if you want to keep seeing what I'm putting out there and bearing with me as I learn, hit subscribe. It's been great to work with you today. Thank you for joining in. I'm Marilyn.